Welcome to SOCOM's Video Production Guide. I'm Ted Blanco, and I produce video content. I've been creating videos for SOCOM for years, and I'd like to share the process I use to help you create your own work. To kick it off, we're going to write an outline to help organize your ideas. Think of this as an elevator pitch and try to answer these questions. Who are you? What is your discipline? What did you do? How did you do it? What did you find out? Why should your audience care? Really make sure to explain why this research is important. With an outline done, the next step is writing a script. Scripting allows you to refine your presentation and tailor it for your desired audience. Here are some tips for writing a script. Try to simplify jargon and technical terms where possible. Define terms that are most important and use similes and metaphors to describe complex concepts. Practice reading and rehearsing out loud to find phrasing that works for you. You'll also want to consider what graphics and visual assets you have that support your presentation. As a general rule, keep graphics simple. Make text easy to read, and as we see here in blue, have your script speak directly to the graphic. Make sense? Great! With your script complete, continue practicing and focus on these techniques. Project your voice, enunciate your words, and go slower than you think you need to. Don't be afraid to bring your personal style and inflection to your presentation. Also, consider downloading a teleprompter app on a phone or a tablet. Practice reading from the device and plan on using it while recording. Now, start thinking about where you want to shoot your video. Deciding on and scheduling a location will inform your camera, lighting, and audio choices. Keep these tips in mind when scouting a location. Is it quiet? Listen for fans, hums, refrigerators, marching bands. Try to eliminate as many as you can. Can you move furniture around? Just remember, put it back when you're done. Is there easy and close access to outlets? Always have a couple of extension cords with you, just in case. I also always carry a three-prong to two-prong plug adapter. Are there time restrictions? Schedule more time than you think you'll need. You'll need at least 30 minutes to set up gear and lighting before shooting. Is the lighting natural? Artificial? Both? Does it change throughout the day? Plan ahead so you can handle various conditions. Remember, no location is perfect. Use these tips to help make the best choice available. With the location locked, let's take inventory of the gear you'll need and how to use it. Start with the camera. Choose a camera that records either 720 or 1080 HD video. This could be a smartphone, webcam, DSLR, GoPro, point and shoot, you get the idea. You may have more than one of these. If so, go with the camera that has the best picture and audio quality. Do some tests if you're not sure. Next, you'll need to stabilize your camera. Remember, no handheld footage. If you have a tripod, you're all set. No tripod? Get creative or do a Google search. There is a whole world of homegrown camera stabilization solutions you can make for free. When setting up the camera, always use fresh batteries and freshly formatted memory card. Check your record settings and clean your lens. Please, please, please don't shoot vertical video. That's better. Set the camera up around eye level. You should center yourself horizontally in the frame and leave a small gap between your head and the top of the frame. If using a separate teleprompter, have it set as close to the camera as possible. Now, let's tackle lights. The most important light is the key light. The key light is the main source used to illuminate the subject, probably you, and is usually located directly above or within a couple feet on either side of the camera. When using the sun as your key light, cover the window with a neutral curtain or white sheet to diffuse or soften the light. Thick clouds can also diffuse light, but scattered clouds can cause unexpected lighting changes. For artificial key lights, choose a portable light, preferably dimmable. 
No dimmer? Try moving the light closer or further from you to brighten or darken your shot. To diffuse the light, use a lampshade or try a favorite of mine, white paper lanterns. They're inexpensive and can fit over most lights. One key to successful lighting is matching the color of your light sources. Cameras are very sensitive to small color shifts in light, so if your lighting includes the sun, all bulbs should be daylight balanced to match. Okay, now I'd like to take a moment to go over audio. Good audio is the unsung hero of any video. If you're recording audio with the camera's microphone, follow these tips. Place the camera close. The closer the camera, the better your audio will be. Avoid large rooms or rooms with lots of hard surfaces. Soft surfaces such as covered furniture, curtains, or rugs stop a lot of echo. Record in a quiet place. Listen for humming or other low noise. Turn off HVAC systems and unplug the refrigerator if you have to. The last thing you'll need is a Windows, Mac, or Linux computer to run the video editing software OpenShot. Most modern computers should meet the minimum requirements for editing. Script, location, gear, check. Before a shoot, I make a checklist of every last thing I will need and only check it off once it's been packed and loaded. On set, decide where the camera and subject will go. Not sure what looks good? Let's go over some useful tips. Avoid sitting against a wall. Instead, move toward the center of the room to add more depth. Avoid sitting in front of bright windows. Turn it around and use the window to light you in the room instead. Set your mark on the floor for standing or sitting. Finally, no swivel chairs. The movement is super distracting. Set up and adjust the camera until you're happy with the composition. With the shot locked, set up and tweak your lights. If working by yourself, do some test recordings while making adjustments to monitor the results. Now, press record, get composure, look into the camera, take a slow breath, and begin. Don't let a mistake derail you. You can always record another take. Try breaking the script down into chunks that span between graphics. Once you nail a section, move on. At the end of each take, continue looking into the camera for a few seconds before hitting stop. You will thank yourself in the edit. Speaking of editing, now that the hard part is over, it's time to put everything together. Start by importing and organizing your footage on your computer. I create a new project folder and use subfolders to keep track of my edits. All slides, graphics, or images should be JPEG or TIFF files. PDFs will not open in OpenShot. Launch OpenShot and set up a new project by going to File, Save Project As. I save this in my Projects folder. Remember to save often as you work. Go to File, Import Files, and bring in everything you need. Your media will appear as thumbnails in the Project Files panel on the left. The edit is built in the Timeline panel located under the Project Files panel. You'll drag your media onto a track with higher tracks obscuring those below. Click inside a clip to move it around and adjust the length by clicking and dragging on the red borders on either side of the clip. Clips can be cut using the razor tool. Access it by clicking on the scissor icon. Click within a clip to make a cut at the cursor. Every clip also has a drop down menu accessible by clicking on this arrow. Use this to add dissolves, adjust audio, or in this case, to change the size of the clip. If your video plays back poorly, first try making your preview window smaller by grabbing these dots and dragging. If this doesn't help, click on the film strip icon and choose a low res profile like this one. Your image may look grainy, but we will change the settings when it's time to export the video. Fully lay out your presentation, then go through and add all graphics. Also, remember to add the SOCOM video bug file to the top track.
Before I export a final video, I check all texts for mistakes and adjust my audio levels to balance out the loud and quiet sections. After everything checks out, it's time to export the video. First thing to do is save your progress. To export, click the solid red circle icon in the top menu. Name your video and choose a location to save the file. Next, set target to MP4 H.264. Then set video target to HD 1080p 29.97 frames per second. Set the quality to high and finally click export video. All that's left is to check the exported video to make sure it's rendered without any issues. If it looks good, you're done. Congratulations. Hopefully you come away from this video more confident and ready to create your own video production. Thanks for watching.